Hey, I'm Gary from Buck and today we're out about with the new Sony A6400. And as is typical for a camera that'd be great for travel photography, really everyday photography, vlogging, everything like that, I've come out into the countryside and it is really misty. It's really foggy. You can't see anything. So we're gonna get some moody shots instead of the landscape shots that I was thinking of. We're going to get some moody shots and see how that goes. So this seems like a good time to run through some of the specs. So it's an APS-C camera from Sony. It's got a 24.2 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. That's a decent resolution and the image quality is actually really, really nice. Obviously the conditions today aren't great for getting nice photos of light bouncing off mountains, stuff like that, but we've been able to get some nice moody photos which actually have come out really well. I'm really happy with them. So the image quality is great. It'll also shoot at 11 frames per second in continuous shooting mode which is actually really quite fast. And the buffer is massively improved over the A6300. So it's a much bigger buffer you've got to play with so you can shoot for much longer. Now, in terms of video, this camera is similar to the A6300, which is a fantastic camera to be used as a B camera for video. A lot of videographers use it as a B camera. This carries over a lot of the great features from that, but it's got some new ones added in as well. So it'll shoot 4K at 24, 25 frames a second. It'll shoot full HD 1080p at 100 or 120 frames a second. So you can get that nice slow motion footage. On top of that, it does HLG recording now. So you can get essentially HDR straight out of camera for HLG TVs. They seem to have fixed the overheating issue that some A6300 owners were having. Uh, I've been shooting with this pretty much all day, photo and video, a lot of 4K as well, and I've not had any overheating issues at all. So that seems to be fixed, which is great news. It's worth noting as well, that 4K footage there's no crop there so it's just full pixel readout which is great it really makes a big difference and the 4k footage on this looks really really nice but the big new feature for video in this camera is the autofocus tracking it works really well to track a subject in video so it seems to stick onto them which is great it seems to lock on works really well i've been really happy with that and it just takes a lot of the workload away from you you don't have to think so much about it in terms of focusing because if it can track a subject like that then you're all good now while we're talking about autofocus it is one of the big things about this camera it just works really well it's so fast as well and i certainly say it's the world's fastest autofocus at 0.002 seconds i can't verify if that's exactly right i don't have a stopwatch that's going to do that I am not going to be able to time it like that, but it is really, really quick. It just snaps straight on. Now, the autofocus system in this camera has had a big upgrade. Everything's had upgrade. Everything from face detection to eye autofocus, right through to locking onto a pattern, calculating distance. Everything's been upgraded and it works really, really well. On top of that, you've got the tracking as well. So subject tracking just locks onto a subject and then follows them around. That works for video and photo. It's incredibly handy and it works again just really well. Now this whole autofocus upgrade means that what you essentially end up with is a camera that's taking out some of the work. It's doing it for you. It's reducing your workload when you're shooting photos or video, and just making it a lot easier, which over time really builds up and is a big, big deal. It's a great system in the camera and it makes it a fantastic camera to shoot with. Now, something that I'm particularly fond of is the form factor. This camera is small, it's compact, but it still feels really nice to hold. The quality is still there. Now, there's a really nice grip, which is very comfortable, and actually, for a camera of this size, is particularly noteworthy. Now, this camera being this small would make a great travel camera, an everyday camera. It's definitely a size you could just pop it in your bag and head out without really thinking too much about it. It's also got a decent EVF, which is really handy on a camera like this. You don't always get the best EVF, but this one is actually really nice. And the screen at the back is great. It's an articulating screen, so it folds round so it's easier to see, but it also folds all the way up for vlogging or selfie taking. Now, obviously that wouldn't work so well if you're using a mic or a light on top of the camera, but other than that, it's a really nice addition to have. It's a nice tool to be able to use. The body itself is weather sealed as well, so I've had no issues in the mist and the potential rain today, which is great. So let's go see what we can get. Now the sun 
is coming out right into my eyes. Now the sun is coming out. Let's see what we can get. Can we get the time lapse I wanted to try out? Can we get all those nice photos I wanted to get? Let's go have a look. It's really interesting actually. I've come up to Beachy Head. I wanted to try out the time lapse. And uh, this will make a great spot for it. As you can see, that's not really going to pan out because it would just be a uniform grey. So we're going to check out a different location for the time lapse. But I just wanted to show you something. I just came over here to see if I could get a shot of the lighthouse. Um, I'm standing near, you know, responsibly near the cliff edge. But I just want to show you this because I have never... It's just staring out into the abyss. That's... That's the sea. And there's just nothing there. So time lapse isn't gonna work up here. So we're gonna have to head somewhere else. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the camera feels really nice to use. The actual body feels good in the hands, but in terms of the actual interface, the menus have definitely been improved and they're easier to navigate, it all just works better. But there's also the customizable option, so you can create your own custom menus, so you get the bits that you need to get to nice and quick, all in one list to make it a lot easier. I know in the past, Sony menus have had a bit of a bad rap about various things, but actually, I found these ones really straightforward, and those custom menus make a big difference. So who is this camera for? Well, any videographer that wants a second camera, a B camera, is going to find this incredibly useful. The video specs in this make it perfect for that kind of thing. The 4K, no crop, that's perfect for interview setups where you want a second camera there. Or really, anyone who wants to get into video as well is going to find this a great camera to start with because of how good those specs are to begin with. That actually goes so far as to say, I'd say anyone who's looking for a good APS-C system to begin photography, to learn it, to get to grips with it, but they don't want to outgrow it too fast. This is a perfect camera for that kind of thing. I have thoroughly enjoyed using this camera. Now I shoot a lot of Sony, I shoot with the a7 III an awful lot. This has been a dream to shoot with. I have really enjoyed my time with the a6400. Definitely gonna use it again as a second camera as often as I can because it is just really handy. Now I hope you found that all helpful. If you have any questions at all, pop them down in the comments below. If you like the video, make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.